Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is a Vivor 8kW diesel heater. You can find hundreds of unboxing videos, so we are skipping that and moving straight to what matters. How to safely and effectively heat your space from a garage to workshop with minimal hassle. The installation itself is surprisingly simple, just air intake, exhaust and power, but you need to get the safety right. A quick disclaimer before we start, I am not a professional installer or a qualified HVAC technician. This video is only for informational and do-it-yourself purposes only. Always consult a local professional. When you put your heater like this, you can see two output holes. The left one is facing the back side and the right one is facing the front side with the display. There aren't too much things you can mess up here, however we need to focus on the crucial area, the exhaust pipe. I won't get into details right now, we'll return to it, but these exhaust pipes can reach temperatures well over 200 degrees Celsius. Now for the power supply. The manual states the unit can handle both 12 and 24 volts. I initially tested it with a 24 volt power supply, but I keep getting the power voltage error and didn't even start. Switching to a reliable 12 volt 15 amp power source solved the issue immediately. If you are installing this in a vehicle, remember to always connect directly to the main battery terminals, never use a standard 12 volt socket. For a complete peace of mind, I wired the entire system through a Sonoff smart switch. This allows me to completely cut the power to the unit from the wall socket when I'm not in use. It's a simple smart upgrade that guarantees zero standby consumption and extra safety. The controller needs to be mounted securely. Instead of a standard bracket, I designed and 3D printed a custom holder. This gives a clean, professional finish and ensures the controller is exactly where I need it. We are skipping straight to the most crucial topic, the exhaust pipe. These pipes can easily reach temperatures over 200 degrees Celsius, which is a significant fire hazard near any building material. The heater comes with its own high temperature exhaust wrap, which you can see on the left, and the quality is visually very similar to the tape I used for exhausts and manifolds. However, after a test run with the original wrap installed, our digital thermometer quickly shows that the surface temperature of the pipe is still climbing close to 200 degrees. This is not safe for a permanent indoor installation. The solution is a proper exhaust sleeve. By adding this specialized fireproof sleeve, we can safely drop the exhaust pipe temperature from 200 degrees Celsius to a much safer 80 degrees, even when the heater runs at full power. The next step is creating a true wall port. Precise placement is essential for mounting the unit, so measure everything twice. The wall penetration was through a hollow brick. I started with a pilot hole, initially aiming for 32 mm. However, the accommodate the necessary safety sleeve and the robust external insulation, I had to enlarge the final hole to 40 mm. I'm going through about 47 cm of brick wall plus an additional 7 cm of external thermal insulation. Make sure your chosen location avoids any structural elements or hidden utilities. Once the hole is clear, the wall sleeve is installed, but as we established, relying on the metal sleeve alone is a big risk. To ensure absolute protection, I cut out a 20 cm section of the external building insulation right around the sleeve. This highly vulnerable gap must be completely replaced with non-flammable materials. This gap was filled with Scamotec 225, a highly resistant building board. 
to show you how effective this material is, I used a blowtorch that's generating over 1000 degrees Celsius directly on the Scamotech. As you can see, there was absolutely zero heat transfer. Next, I joined two 3 cm thick Scamotech boards using 1500 degrees stove cement. It is absolutely vital that the entire opening around the exhausts, including all joints and gaps between the Scamotech and the main structure, is sealed using the same high temperature stove cement. This eliminates the risk of any hot gases escaping into the wall cavity. After installation, a full hour test run confirmed success. All surface temperatures around the wall penetration are now safe, proving the Scamotech setup works perfectly to protect your home and prevent fire hazards. So after weeks of using the Vivor heater, how does it compare to my old system? I was previously heating the workshop with a 3.2 kW AC unit. It consumes around 650 watts when heating, which sounds cheap. But the massive downside is that in real cold the AC unit simply cannot effectively warm the space. I struggled to get above 20 degrees in the shop and my identical unit in the garage maxed out at 18 degrees, even running all day. The Weaver is a game changer, it can boost the room temperature from 16 degrees to comfortable 21 degrees in about 30 minutes. I see videos where people mix this with old motor oil or cooking oil, but for my workshop consumption it's simply not worth the risk. I only use pure clean diesel fuel to ensure long term health of the unit. The unit uses its own built-in thermostat, but be warned, it reads the temperature right next to the hot machine, meaning it shows a much higher temperature than the rest of the room. After some testing, I found my sweet spot. Setting the unit to 32 degrees Celsius on the controller provides a stable and comfortable 21 degrees in the rest of the shop. I turn it on in the morning, it boosts up to level 5 of power and then happily throttles down to level 2 or 3 to maintain the heat. The manufacturer claims the 5 liter tank lasts about 8 hours at full blast. In my real world winter usage, running it daily to maintain a comfortable temperature, the same 5 liter tank lasts me about 5 to 7 days. That is simply efficiency you cannot beat.